Perform it. Yes. This morning we pray in accordance with your word in Isaiah chapter 41. Yes. Where you tell us, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes. Yes. Our strength is that right now you are here, Jehovah. Yes. You're yes. telling us not to be dismayed. You're telling us not to fear. You promise to hold us, God. You promise to strengthen us, my Father. And therefore, Jehovah God will bring our nation before you. We stand declaring that the God of promises to uphold us with the right hand of righteousness is the God we are calling upon today. Saint Kenya 
is in the hands of a God who is mighty. Kenya is in the hands of a God who cannot be defeated. Kenya is in the hands of a God who is not confused. And therefore, Kenya, Kenya, oh Kenya, we command you to hear the voice of the Lord. We command you to sustain peace. We command you to sustain unity. We declare this morning in accordance with the same word. In verses 11, Lord, your word says, Yes. Behold, all that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Yes. They shall be as nothing. Yes. And they that strive with thee shall perish. We declare this morning, yes. every mind, every gathering yes. that is striving with our nation, Kenya, yes. you shall die by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare Jehovah God that we send this word to the corridors of power. We declare those that are, are bringing confusion. They shall be confounded. They shall not succeed. They shall not succeed. Yes. We declare in our economy, those that are working against Kenya shall not succeed. We declare that those that are rising up against our unity shall not succeed. We release your word. We release the ministering angels. We say, go forth and fulfill the word of the Lord. Yes. We declare Kenya is a peaceful nation. Kenya Kenya is a growing economy. Kenya is a country of peace. It is a country of love. It is a country of unity. It is a country where Christ yes. is the King of Kings. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, we send your word to the church. Wherever there is a gathering this morning, we declare your word fulfilled. We declare liberation, oh God. We declare salvation, Father. We declare healing and restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the church of deliverance. Master, we decree that in this year that you declared, as a year of restoration and demonstration, you're releasing your power. You're restoring things. You're demonstrating your grace. You're demonstrating your power. You're demonstrating your healing grace upon the entire deliverance. And therefore, God, we want to thank you for our general overseer. We thank you for the leaders of this church. We declare, Master, you're revealing yourself to them daily. According to where you want to take deliverance, church. Thank you for the healing we have enjoyed. Thank you for the peace we've enjoyed. Because we have had leadership that owes you, my God. Today we speak blessings upon Bishop Dr. Mark, who has been the mark of peace, the mark of grace, the mark of mercy upon deliverance, church. Lord, we pray that you increase your grace upon him. Here in the house of bread, my father, we thank you for our senior pastors, Bishop Dr. Mark and Reverend Joyce. We release them to your grace. We declare we are satisfied in that which you have put in them, that it shall blossom and explode in our very lives. Today, we stand submitted to you. We stand with our hearts open to you. Yes. We say, Lord, come and have your way and do your will. We declare that the prophet in the house today is releasing a word of healing, a word of a and a word of change. Glorify you, Father, for it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And together we say, Amen. Let's celebrate the Lord in Give the house. Give the Lord a shout of celebration. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Somebody declare, this is my day. This is my day. This is my season. This is my season. And my life. And my life. Will never. Will never. Ever. Ever. Be the same again. Be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you can swing around and watch who is next to you and just tell them I bless you. Just from a distance, I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. I bless you, I bless you, I bless you. I bless you. Even with a hidden smile, you can bless. Thank you, you may be seated. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us appreciate the one accord ministers for the work that they are doing. Give them a hand of appreciation, please. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let us appreciate them. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so very much. May the Lord richly bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You can imagine how torturous it is for a preacher who is used to hearing amen and now he doesn't hear amen. 
and he's preaching. You can imagine how torturous that is, like being in a in one of those uh, one of those Russian Russian churches. I went to preach in the Ukraine. I went to preach in the Ukraine, and the pastor told me, "You know, people here don't talk. People they will just look at you." And sure enough, when I started, they were all looking at me like stones. But the pastor had told me, even when they are quiet, they are they, they are listening. But by the time I was done, they were no longer stones. They were no longer as hard as stones. They were, they were smiling. They were responding. And I realized man is the same everywhere. Man is the same everywhere. What brings change in the life of an individual is the word of God. And that's why I purposed, I, I dedicated myself to preaching the word of God. That for me, I will preach the word of God to the last minute in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if I give you stories, stories will not help you. If I give you theology, theology will not help you. If I bring you to arguments and uh, of what so and so says and the other, it will not help you. What will help you is the word of God. Because Jehovah knows where you are. He knows what you are going through and he knows the word that you need. So he will cause me to say words which I did not plan and you will capture that word and you receive your miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that Jehovah knows you by your name. I think it was on, on Friday. On Friday, on Friday, we were doing the service, and I was doing it outside some, in some place. And there was a heap. There was a heap of stones. There was a heap of kokoto, and there was a heap of sand. And while I was still preaching, while I was still ministering the word, I saw I saw the grass that had grown around the around the sand, around the kokoto, on top of the stones. There was there, there was not only grass but other weeds and I remembered I realized the Holy Spirit reminded me that when the owner of that piece of land comes to start building he will not get rid of that kokoto because of the wind he will not get rid of the stones because of the wind. All he will need to do is to uproot the, 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 the wind and then use the stone. And I realized that the value of the stone is not determined by the weed or the grass around it. The value does not diminish. The value does not diminish. So in our lives, there are times you will find there are some weeds which have grown. Coronavirus has come and has allowed some weeds to grow. And you look at yourself and you think you are valueless. I came to say to you, your value in the eyes of God is not conditioned by what is around you. You are of great value. I pray that you will capture this, that you know you are of great value as far as God is concerned. And your value is not dependent on what is around you. Your value is not dependent on your paycheck. Your value is not dependent on how much money there is in your pocket. Your value is not determined by who knows you or who does not know you. Your value is determined by your relationship with God. And that's what we need to guard. That our relationship with God. And that comes as a result of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. I know, I, I don't know whether I announced whether we would have Sunday school today or not. But whether I announced, I, I, I announced that we were going to have Sunday school today. Okay, I'm, suge I'm, I'm suggesting, I'm su maybe suggesting or declaring that the kids stay in the service. Since this coming sun, this, uh, 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 until we have gone to the Majestic and back, you, the, let the kids stay with us. Why? Because I also want to be connected with the kids. That, that connection is, very, is very, very, very special. The connection with the kids. And so I want to be connected with the kids. So I don't know whether your kids are, have, have already gone up or they are all here. Now, if they are, if they are gone up, the ashes or the, the ashes will go up. You give them a chair and tell them to come and sit to their parents with a small, one of those small chair, chairs. And then we hit the road. We want to welcome those of you who are watching on the One Accord television and those of you who are watching on social media. Welcome to our worship service. I want you to know that the word of the Lord is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And this morning, I have the word of the Lord for you. 
I said, I have the word of the Lord for you. We are looking at recovery because we said this is the month of recovery. This is the year. This is the year of restoration and demonstration for us. And that which was stolen by the Amalekites has got to be restored back in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are looking or we've been looking at the strategies, the strategies for recovery. And we found this in 1 Samuel chapter number 30. In 1 Samuel chapter number 30, this is where we found the strategies for recovery. And if you remember the story, it is the story of David having and the, and, the, and the village of Ziklag, which was David's village of refuge when he ran away from Saul. And the Amalekites came and burnt down the village. They burnt down the whole thing and they took the wives. They took the wives and the children and the animals and everything that David had. And by the time David is coming back, he is in a state of discouragement. David is discouraged, the people are discouraged and they decided to stone him. They started, decided to stone David. But before he did, we saw strategy number one. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You need to have a relationship with God. So that when the Amalekites have come, or when you are discouraged, you can encourage yourself in the Lord you are. God. You need, to, you need to have a relationship so that when you look at your business and you see your business is not doing good, you encourage yourself in the Lord your God. Because there is not a there is not a, a situation as bad as being in a state of discouragement. You know, a state of discouragement is saying, I am finished. I can't make it. It's now coming to the end of the road. It is a very, very discouraging situation. It is a very, very bad situation. I remember this day when I came from Lanet, having desired to be, to be a, 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 an officer in the army. And having been there for one week, and I was told that I had failed the interview. I had not passed the interview. I went home, and I discovered, discouraged people want to go home. Discouraged people want to go home. Going home is not necessarily going to your mother's house. Going home is sitting down and saying, well, there is nothing I can do. Now everything is gone. I will just sit here. It is gone. There is nothing I can do. And there are so many people who are sitting down today in a state of discouragement. Because there is some power that has come and has brought discouragement. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I want you to know, when you encourage yourself in the Lord your God, you will desire to find out what is the will of God in my life concerning this situation what is the will of God concerning this situation because it is the will of God that will lift you up it is the will of God that will take you to the next level it is the will of God that will change your life and this is the confidence that we have that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us there is nothing as great as having this confidence that I prayed and God heard me. I have cried unto the Lord and he heard me. I came to say to somebody this morning, your cry has come to God. Your prayer has come to God. Jehovah has remembered you. Oh, I want to say that again. Jehovah has remembered you. Therefore, you need to have a relationship with God so that when that moment comes, you can encourage yourself in the Lord, you are God. David inquired from the Lord. Strategy number two. He inquired from the Lord. He did not go to Kitui. He did not look for a witch. He did not look for a wizard. Let me tell you, my friends, everybody needs a higher authority. Every man, every woman needs, requires demands a higher authority. If you do not have a relationship with God, you will find yourself making men your higher authority. Making a woman, a witch, your higher authority. 
that when you want to know, you will go and inquire. This is the unfortunate thing, especially when it comes to our politicians. When we are told, or when you hear them going to witches to find out what the witches are saying, that is not your portion. I said, that shall not be your portion. You shall have a relationship with God that you may inquire of the Lord, that you may find out from the Lord, Lord, how do I go? What do I do? How, what do I do? So strategy number three, David encouraged his men. He encouraged his people. In other words, you are the encourager of the people you work with. You are the encourager of your family members. Now, you as a father, you cannot afford to be discouraged. You as a mother, you cannot afford to be discouraged. You cannot afford to get to a point where you are saying, I am done, it is over, I am finished, I don't know what to do. Ah, uh ah, -uh. I want you to know, before you say, I do not know what to do, inquire from the Lord. When you inquire from the Lord, you will be able to encourage the people who are going with you. You will be able to encourage your family. You will be able to encourage the people who are looking up to you. So David inquired of the Lord. David encouraged his people. Strategy number four, identify the enemy. Identify the enemy. David identified the enemy. How did he identify the enemy? Through his generosity. Through his giving. There was this young man who was left by the Amalekites to die because he was sick. For three days he has not eaten. When David is going Pursuing the enemy, they find, he and his army finds this man. They gave the young man some food. They gave him a four-course meal, four-course meal, and he ate. When he was full, then he started talking. I want you to know that the mouth opens the hearts of many people. Hi. That the mouth will open the hearts of many people. I encourage every one of you to be generous in your giving. To be generous in your giving. Not just to give to people you know, but also to people you do not know. That you give to the people who need help. That you become a helper of the people. Because your miracle is in that young man. Your miracle is in that old woman. Don't you ever dare look at your mother and call her the old woman or call your father the old man. He is your father. You will support your father. You will feed your father. You will take care of him. Oh, Bishop, you don't know my father. He is a wizard. It doesn't matter whether he is a wizard or whether your mother is a witch. They are your parents, period. They are your, your parents, period. And you will stand with them. This young man is the one who told David. He told David that I am a young man, an Egyptian. I am just a servant. I got sick. I was left to die. I was left to die, but I have not died. And he asked, who did that? And he said, I am a servant of an Amalekite. That is how David discovered that the enemy was the Amalekite. When he left, when they went pursuing, they had no idea who they were pursuing. But he discovered from this young man, this is, the enemy is, the Amalekites. I want you to know that the Amalekites were descendants. The Amalekites were descendants of Esau. And David was a descendant of Jacob. The Amalekites were descendants of Esau and, the, and David was a descendant of Jacob. And if you remember very well, even in the womb, in their mother's womb, Esau and Jacob were still fighting. They were still fighting. They were fighting one another. So on, in this occasion, when David gathers that these are the Amalekites, and he remembers the battle. And in this battle, he has always won. Jacob won the battle. He knew, yes, I am winning this one. 
This one I am going for it. This one I am going to fight. So I want to say to you, every Amalekite, every Amalekite that has risen against you shall surrender. It shall, shall be conquered in the name of Jesus Christ. When we look at history, when you look back, you see, you see that, that J Jacob, Jacob got the birthright from his brother. Jacob got the blessing before his brother. I want you to know that the game has not changed. The game has not changed. Why? Because our God is called the God of Jacob. He is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He never changes. I pray that you will see his hand upon your life. I pray that you will see his hand upon your life. Now, strategy number five. Strategy number five. David came into agreement. David came into agreement. I'm giving you strategies that will cause you to recover that which you have lost. Let us, let us come to verse number, verse number 19. What does verse number 19 say, Joyce? Of First Samuel chapter number chapter number thirty, and v and verse nine, verse nine, baby. Let me. See. Yes. So David went. Uh -huh. He and the six hundred men that were with him. Okay, hold it right there. So David went. He and the six hundred men that were with him. It is these 600 men that wanted to stone him. It is these 600 men whose wives have been taken away. It is these 600 men whose children have been taken away. It is these 600 men who have lost everything. The 600 men are the only friends that David has at this particular time. He has run away from home, run away from Saul with these 600 men and their families. Now, Ziklag is burnt down. They have picked up stones. They have cried. They have wept until they couldn't weep anymore. David had to encourage them so that they come into an agreement. Because if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they ask, it shall be done. It shall be done. That is in Matthew, 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 Matthew 18. I think Matthew 18 and verse, now, verse number 19. Look at verse, Matthew 18 and 19. What does it say? Matthew 18 and 19. What does it say? Again I say unto you. Again I say unto you. That if two of you shall agree that on if earth, two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask as touching anything as touching anything that they shall ask what will happen it shall be done for them it shall be done for them of my father which, of my father which is, which in, is heaven. in heaven in other words my father our God is so interested in agreement. There is power in agreement. If your eyes would only be opened up and see the power that is in agreement, your life would be different. Your life would be changed. You would no longer be interested in winning a debate. You would no longer be interested in winning an argument. Because when you... you when you win an argument and you lose the individual, you have lost everything. I pray that we will come to a point where we know that victory is found in agreement. If the church would get into agreement in this nation, we would silence the politicians. If the church would come into agreement, even during this season, we, our voice would be heard. But what is happening? The church is quiet and the moment when the time comes, you find everybody running on their own. If the house of bread, let me come home. If the house of bread would remain united, let me tell you my friends, we are where we are today because of our unity. 
Let me say that again. We have arrived where we are or we have reached where we are because of our unity. Because in unity, you do not take advantage of anybody. In unity, you respect everybody. Are you, are you hearing me? It is important that you learn to respect one another. When we respect one another, we walk in victory. God honors that. Oh, how blessed and how good, how, how good and how present it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There, God has commanded a blessing. I came to say to you, my friend, a united church is a victorious church. I said a united church is a victorious church. I pray that the unity at the house of bread, I pray that the unity in deliverance church shall continue and victory shall be manifested. I can say with confidence that since the year 2000, we have not had a shaking in deliverance church. We have not had a shaking in deliverance church. Why? We have remained united. We have stuck united. Let me come a little bit closer. Even in your home, in your house, in your marriage, there is power in agreement. There is power in agreement. When you get married, you are so good, you are so close. After a few months, you get a few people to tell you that you have got to do things your own way. You get a few people to tell you that now you are an independent person. You can do your own things. I want you to know it is dangerous. It is dangerous. God brought the two of you together and he said the two shall be one. The two shall be one. They shall walk as one team. They shall walk in agreement. You shall walk in unity. Why? Because the greatest unity, the greatest power is released in the union of marriage. The greatest power is released in the union of marriage. That is why you find marriage is so much attacked today. That's why you find that if there is anything that is attacked, there is nothing attacked more than marriage today. There are, when you read in the papers, they say domestic violence is increasing. Why is domestic violence increasing? Because of disagreement. There is no unity. Because you want to do your own things, you want to do your own things. Because someone told you, you can be independent. If you wanted to be independent, remain unmarried. You want to be independent, remain unmarried. When you get married, you surrender your, your independence. Hey. There is no competition in the house. The two shall be one. Let me tell you, don't allow that your children to bring competition in your house. Don't start competing against your children. Don't start looking for people to support you in the house that my children are supporting me. My mother-in-law is supporting me. Where are you married to your mother-in-law or to your wife? Are, are you with me? I, I know you are thinking I have, trans, uh, I have digressed, but I have not digressed because I speak that which I hear and I have no syllabus to accomplish. Are, are, are you with me? There's got to be agreement in that house because if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything 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 that you ask it shall be done the question is are you in agreement or are you competing against one another with your partner your business partner are you in agreement as long as you are in agreement as long as you are together the business will flourish but the moment you start now taking your interest and their interest and you are separating, why do you think we have some of these problems in Kenya today? It is because there is no agreement at the top. That disagreement at the top is not helping this nation. I can say that with confidence. 
that the disagreement at the top is not helping this nation. And that's something that needs to be dealt with by the people concerned. Because you are leading the people of God. You are not leading animals. You are leading the people of God. There is going to be agreement if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything. But they shall ask. It shall be done. David came into agreement with his men. They agreed. Now you put your stones down. Let's go to battle. You put your stones down. Let's go and fight. You put your disappointments down. Let's go together. You put your anger down. Let's go together. Come on, baby. I came to say to you, mama, put your anger down. I came to say to you, my brother, put your anger down. Sit together with your wife. Sit together with your wife and tell her and tell him. You see, all these people, all of them can leave me. But this one cannot leave me. Eh? Because marriage, marriage is for life. Until death do us part. I was reading, I was uh, getting some information somewhere. When this, uh, this, uh, this lady, Princess Diana, died, when she died, she had some, it is, it is said she had some boyfriend somewhere in Italy or wherever, wherever it was. She, was, she had some, some, some boyfriend and she was with a, with a boyfriend there. But when she died, who went for her body? Was it the boyfriend or the husband? Don't be deceived by boyfriends. Don't be deceived by girlfriends. Don't be deceived by Mpango Wakando. You come and you're having a Mpango Wakando and now you see your wife as a, as a rival. You are seeing your wife as an enemy or you are seeing your husband as an enemy. Way. That Mkando, Mpango Wakando thing, you fall down, they will leave you there and go on their way. You go to the hospital, they will never come and see you. It is your wife who will come. It is your husband who will come. You need to be in agreement with your husband, Boana. You need to be in agreement with your, with your wife. In the family, this is the strongest unity. The, the strongest unit. The strongest unit is the unit of the family. Don't start looking at other families which seem to be better than yours. And you are saying, you know, you know, you know the husband of so and so. Or the husband of my friend loves, loves his wife so much. They are always together and you don't love me. Where? Don't compare yourself. You build yours. Build yours. I have always said in a wedding, Ukiona vyaelea vimeundwa. When you look, when you look at when you look at Joyce, when you look at Joyce, they are ministering on social media. Oh, you know what was that you were speaking on the other day? Uh, what was that? You was, what, uh, uh, promoting the kingdom, you know, promoting the kingdom. We are promoting the kingdom. We are building the kingdom. I, uh, of course, I look, I, I look at the comments, and someone commented, "Oh, you are so beautiful." Somebody, somebody commented that not in bad faith, not in bad faith they were telling the truth they were telling the truth, this was actually a lady said mom you are so beautiful, you look so beautiful, you think she was like that <laughs> you think she was like that ukiona via elea vimefanya nini vimeundwa na vinaundwa kwa makubaliano what when you walk together in agreement? Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 and I think verse number 10. He says, I pray that you all speak the same thing. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse number 9. What does it say? What does, now I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you, I beg you by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you all speak the same thing. Now, if you, if you get to a pastor's house, a pastor from the house of bread, 
and you start speaking there against another pastor, you are in trouble. I said you are in trouble. If you ever find yourself seated with a brother or a sister discussing Morioki because of his beard, I want you to know you are in trouble. You are in trouble. You are destroying yourself. I came to say to you, you shall not destroy yourself. You shall not destroy yourself. Will every, is everybody perfect? No, they are not perfect. Is your husband perfect? No, he, is not, he, has, he has no idea what perfection is. Is your wife perfect? She has never heard that word. But, uh, but God brought the two, the two of you together. Because the two of you can make a unit that can shake this world. The, you, God, the two of you can make a unit that will make a difference. David got into agreement with his men. They agreed. He agreed with his men. We shall go. We shall go. We shall go. I want you, I want you to know, my friends, that we are going to the majestic city. The majestic city is coming up. I said the majestic city is coming up. And we are going there in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As they were going, as they were going, some of the men were too weak to go. Some of the men were too weak to go. Because of their weakness, they were not, they were not destroyed. Or the journey was not delayed. The battle was not delayed because of their weakness. They were told, you stay at this brook. You stay here. 200 men. 200 men. You are going to fight an enemy who has burnt the whole village and has attacked the south. But and 200 of your men say we can't make it. Or not, don't didn't even say, but they just, they were too weak to continue. They have come from a journey. They have been crying the whole night. They are so discouraged. They, they are in agreement, but they can't make it. So what happens? They are told, you stay here. We are going. You stay here. We are going. And David goes on with the 400 men. 400 men. In other words, you do not condemn the weak in your midst. I said, you do not condemn the weak in your midst. You do not destroy the weak in your midst. You give them some comfort. You give them some comfort. You tell them, you hang around here. We are going to fight for you. You stay here. We are going to fight for you. When God has given you the energy, when God has given you the ability, remember, it is not your ability. It is not your, uh, you as alone. It is your ability to fight for yourself and to fight for the rest of the body. Why? Because we are one. You go to Genesis chapter number 11. I'm saying, I'm telling you, David got into agreement. We need to come to a point of agreement. We need to agree that this business we, 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 is going to succeed. We need to agree this book is going to be written. We need to agree that this marriage is going to survive. Listen to me, my friend. In marriage, in marriage, the only battle you are, uh, uh, you, are, you are supposed or you are permitted to fight. The only battle you can fight in marriage is the fight for your marriage to survive. You don't, you, you don't fight one another. You fight for your marriage to survive. So if you notice that your, wife, your husband or your wife is slackening, you fight for him. You fight for your wife. Don't come and tell me, oh, Bishop, you know, my husband has been taken by another woman. Where were you when she was being, he was being taken? And what were you doing when he was being taken? You don't just sit there and say, you know, you know, my wife has been taken by somebody else. I don't know what to do. Bishop, I'm so disquiet. Fight for your marriage. I said, fight for your marriage. Don't fight for your rights. Fight for your marriage. When you fight, your marriage survives. Your rights have no problem. So David got into an agreement with his men. 
that let's go together. And they went together. We, we did see in verse number nine that he went together with the men. He went together with the men. I came to say to somebody, we are going together. We were going to Genesis chapter number 11. We were going to Genesis 11. You look at the power, the power of agreement, the power of unity. You see, un agreement is as a result of understanding. Agreement is as a result of understanding. When you understand the situation, you get into an agreement. When you get into an agreement, the agreement is binding. That is what is called unity. You are united. Now, when we go to Genesis chapter number 11, you will find the story that we learned in Sunday school. The story of the Tower of Babel. The building of the Tower of Babel. And there is a testimony there. There is a testimony there. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 11. 11 from verse 1. You look from verse 1. What does it say, Joyce, very quickly? And the whole earth was of one language uh -huh. and of one speech. Capture that. The whole language was of one language and of one speech. Okay, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 9. What does Paul say? I beseech you, brethren, that you all do what? You all do what? Speak the same thing. Speak the same thing. That you be of one language. You be of one speech. Oh, I plead with you. Oh, house of bread. I plead with you, my brothers and my sisters. I plead you, with you, oh, deliverance church. I plead with you, oh, church of Jesus Christ, that we be of the same speech and the same language. When you speak the same language, you speak the same, the same speech. I want you to know victory is manifested. I said victory is manifested. Now, let, 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 us, let, us, let us deal with this once and for all. Number one, if you're a member of the house of bread, you will never talk against another member. See, I have not heard you. Therefore, I don't know whether you heard me. If you're a member of the house of bread, you will never talk about another member of the house of bread. You will never talk against your pastor. Oh, come on. You will never talk against your bishop. Even when he is 95. Because I will still be preaching. I will still be preaching. This one, I will, I will do his wedding. This one, I will do his wedding. You wait and see. Are, are, are you with me? Now, when we speak the same thing, we get to a point where we agree. As far as we are concerned, there is nothing impossible. I said, there is nothing impossible. When I, quit, when I came from Nakuru and came into Nairobi, I had no idea what God had prepared for me. But now you can see there is land, five, five acres of land in Nairobi. That is not by coincidence. It is by the divine plan of God. It is by the divine plan of God. Therefore, we shall remain united. We shall stick together. We shall move together. I'm not only addressing members of the house of bread. I am talking to you too. You have got to be united with your pastor. You have got to be united with your uh, pastor and with your leaders. You can't afford to be talking against your leaders and expect to succeed. If you want to succeed, you have got to be of the same speech. Okay, baby, let's move on. And the whole world, the whole world was of one speech okay. and one language. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. It shall come to pass. Amen. I said it shall come to pass. Amen. Okay, move on, baby. As they journeyed from the east. Go to verse number three. And they said to one another. They said to one another. 
go to let us make brick let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stones and they made brick for stone and slime had they for for mortar and slime for cement and they said and then they said go to let us build us a city let us tower. build up a city let us build us a city they are saying let us make for ourselves a city that where the problem is the selfish motive it is us no longer god it is us let us build us a city but i want you to see the unity in them keep moving baby and a tower uh -huh. whose top may reach unto heaven uh -huh, then and let us make us a name. let us make us a let us make us a name that's where they missed it. Ours is to glorify God. The majestic city is for God to be exalted. The house of bread is for God to be exalted. And it has nothing to do with Mark Karaoke. And it has nothing to do with Joyce. And it has nothing to do with Pastor Margaret. And it has nothing to do with you. It is for the glory of God. We stand to glorify God. Your business is to glorify God. Your work is to glorify God. Your, your company is to glorify God. Keep moving, baby. Lest we be scattered abroad. Uh -huh, keep going. Upon the face of the whole earth. Yes. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Uh -huh. Which the children of men. Did. Verse number six. And the Lord said. And the Lord said. Behold. Listen to the testimony of God. God has heard what they have said. Let us build our, us a city. We are together. They are united in communication. They are saying, let us build us a city. So God decides. Let me see what they are doing. This is a testimony that God gives. Come on, baby. The people is one. The people is one. And in other words, these people are united. These people are together. They are one. When you speak one language, you are one. When we speak the same thing, we are united. The people is one, babe. And they have all one language. And they are, com they are united in communication. They are communicating. They are understanding one another. I want to say to you, my friend, if there is anything to guard, you need to guard in your house is communication. So that your wife does not say, give me that, that, that mwiko. And then you say she wanted to hit me with a mwiko. Because that's the confusion that the devil car brings. When you have a good intention, he, he comes and changes your intention so that you can be, a, that communication, that unity is no longer there. Come on, keep going. And this they begin to do. And whatever they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. Nothing will be strained from them. Which they have imagined to that do. That which they have imagined to do. Because of their unity, because they are united, there is nothing they cannot achieve. I want you to know, my friend, there is power in agreement. I said there is power in agreement. When you are in agreement in your language, you think the same thing. You are doing the same thing. You speak the same language. You are participating, all of us. All of us are participating. There are no champions. You will succeed. That is the word of the Lord. Chunguru. <laughs> You know, when the word of the Lord is preached, everybody receives their part. I don't know whether I told you about that, that man in Gedongori once who was in an open air meeting and the preacher was preaching. And while he's standing there, he's saying, why is this preacher uh, preaching like that? So he goes to the, to the preacher. Well, the preacher, it was this preacher who he, he, he used to, he used to uh, pictures. So he was having a picture, explaining a picture, and, and turning on while he was preaching. This man went and told him, Where, Mohutia, you preacher, you have cut me. You have cut me two times. If you cut me the third time, you will see. In other words, you have spoken about me. 
two times. If you speak the third time, you will see. And the man goes back. And the preacher just continues. And then he gets so, this guy got so annoyed. He went to where the preacher told, I, I told you, you, if you cut me the third time, you will be in trouble. Oh, pop! And another one which was used to be called Kemanyoko, cup and slapped the preacher and he was so furious he told the preacher you tell that God of yours to follow me tell that God of yours to follow me the man had a bicycle and he had just come from the butcher he had bought a, a pound of meat and tied it on the, on the back seat of the bicycle jumped on his bicycle in Gedungori and he's going down down near where the junction the junction to Nairobi is right there he, he fell off his bicycle when he fell off his bicycle, he fell down. Either there was a Changarawe, he fell off, uh, got to the side of the bicycle. Kumbe, he broke his neck when he fell off. And he died there and there. And safari ants started consuming him. They started consuming him. People who are passing by, going to see, they are the ones who say, hey, he is dead. So they ran up, and well, the preacher is still preaching. They run up and they are telling, oh, there is somebody who has died at, 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 at the junction. When they go, it is the guy who told the preacher, you tell that God of yours to follow me. I want you to know that we serve a great God. I said you, we serve a great God. I said all that to tell you, you can only hear for yourself. Nobody can hear for you. I don't know whether you have heard. I, I don't know what you have heard. I don't know whether you have been cut once <laughs> or you have been cut twice. Or you have been cut three times, or you have been cut throughout the whole sermon. You have just been catacutted, 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 and you are saying, let, I, let the time for the offering come. I'm not going to pay my tithe. I'm not going to give an offering. Way! It is up to you. Now, since you have heard the word of the Lord, why don't you take a moment and just thank God? Just tell the Lord, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the word. I thank you for speaking to me. I thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for your word. I receive your word. Thank you for correction. Thank you for information. Thank you for revelation. I receive the revelation. I receive your word. I receive what you are saying to me. Oh Lord, you are so good. You are so precious. There is none like unto you, dear Lord. Father, I receive. I will be united. I purpose to unite my family. I purpose to unite my family. To be united with my people. Those who are working for me and those who, are, who I am working for. Lord, I purpose to be united with my spouse, with my children. That we shall be in agreement. I choose to be in agreement with my spouse. I choose to be in agreement with my family. I choose to be in agreement with my board members. I choose to be in agreement with my pastors. I choose to be in agreement with those who are working with me. Those who are working for me. I choose to be in agreement. Let the power of agreement be manifested. Let your power of agreement be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let your unity be manifested in my home, in my family, in my business, in whatever I do. Let that unity be manifested. For in that unity there is healing. In that unity there is deliverance. In that unity there is grace. There is power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, receive your miracle now, my brother. Receive your miracle, my sister. Receive your miracle right now, my friend. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you receive the revelation of the word. May you receive the word of the Lord. May you receive the revelation of the word. May you make a decision. May you make a decision to be united in purpose. To be united in communication. To be united in vision. And to be united in participation. That you are participating in everything that you are doing to the glory of God. Father, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Give the Lord a clap offering and a shout of celebration. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You may be seated. It is the word of God that brings in healing. It is the word of God that brings in deliverance. So you receive according to the way you have received the word of the Lord. May you see change in your situation. I said you will see change in your situation. 
you will not live under condemnation anymore. I said you will not live under condemnation anymore. You receive the forgiveness of God. You receive the forgiveness of God. You receive the power to be united. The power to be united. You receive the power of agreement in the name of Jesus Christ. Agree with the word of God. Choose to agree with God. As you agree with your spouse, choose to agree with God. For when you agree with God, nothing shall be impossible in Jesus' name. Amen. Right there where you are at home, you make your own decision. You choose to agree with God. And when you choose to agree with God, you surrender your life to Him. I have this question to ask you. Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? Could you be in here and you are not born again? You have not given your life to Jesus. I want you to know our pastors are here and they are going to pray with you as soon as we are done. But for now, we want to pray for all those of you who are here and those who are watching on television and those who are watching from one accord, on one accord television and from the social media that you may give your life to Jesus. Please pray with me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, this day I come to you. I acknowledge that the work done at the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ was for me. He died for me, was buried for me, resurrected for me, ascended into heaven for me, and is coming again for me. And right now, willingly, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you this day. I thank you, Father, for saving me now because I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, my friend. You are now born again. Please, the best the thing that you need to do is to turn to somebody and tell them I'm born again. Tell somebody I've given my life to Jesus. They overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That word that I'm now born again, I've given my life to Jesus, is power to dismantle the powers of the enemy. Please make sure you tell at least five people, 10 people, 20 people before you go to bed tonight. Tell at least 20 people that you are born again. Those of you who are here and you prayed that prayer for the first time, as soon as we say the benediction, I would like to come you to come and speak to one of our pastors. Our pastors will be here. Come and speak to them and they will tell you what you need what you need to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say yes. yes. This is the word of the Lord. For me and my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. It is time to worship the Lord with our substance. Somebody say poverty. Shame on you. You have no power. You have no influence over my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You were conquered over 2,000 years ago. And this day, I am free from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now we know at the house of bread that worship is not complete until we place our offering at the altar. Until we place our sacrifice at the altar. Because the sacrifice... It is the sacrifice that keeps the fire at the altar burning. So I want to give you an opportunity to bring in your offering, to bring in your sacrifice. If you are ready with your envelope, you are ready with your, with your phone, you are ready with your check, whatever you are, you are, there are different options that you can use. You can use the, our m -Pesa pay bill number. Our m -Pesa pay bill number is 525107. And the account is tithe or offering or other. Tithe offering of or other. 525107 is our pay bill number. Or you can do a direct bank to bank transfer. You can transfer to, from your bank 
your, your tithe, your offering, that which your purpose to give to the church account, account, which is found in equity. And this is the account number 018-029-022-1689. That is, our, uh, it is right on the screen. You can use that. Or you can use the Equity Bank M-Pesa pay bill number. M-Pesa pay, uh, pay bill number for Equity Bank is 247247. 247247. And the account number is on the screen 018-029-022-1689. That is a charge account. Or you can write a check. You can write a check direct to uh, Deliverance Church LCCI. Deliverance Church LCCI, and uh, you can lay the, the the you can bring the uh, the check to the altar, or you can take it to the bank and put it in that account, and you will enjoy the blessings of the of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you. Or you can go at the back and swipe your card. If you brought in your card, you can swipe your card at the back and you bring in your offering. There are some of you, some of you have not been able to bring in your tithe since the month of March. You can imagine, since the month of March, you have not been able to bring in your tithe. Do not allow the devourer to settle in your home. Do not allow the devourer to settle in your home or in your business. We know that the tithe is the foundation of your prosperity. So you need to lay a good foundation. Once you have done that, once you have sent, uh, sent, uh, sent your, your tithe or your offering, please send me, uh, send the confirmation, send the confirmation straight away uh, to, my, to me so that I can be able to communicate to, I can be able to communicate to you. I can see quite a number of you. I think that's a good tradition. You can disassociate, disassociate your tithe from Sunday. Disassociate your offering from Sunday that you will only send, bring your tithe on Sunday. Send it. I see some of you sent your tithe even earlier. Even earlier. Thank you so, so very much. May the Lord richly bless you. I can see, I can see Lydia. Thank you so very much. Masika, I have received Motuma. I, we have received uh, 1571. We have received Sarah Dicho, Sarah Manu. Thank you, Winnie. Winnie. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Wilfred, Wilfred Gechure. Thank you, 2114, Lucy Njoki, the KGS. Thank you so very much. I, I, I just send me, you just send the, 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 the confirmation. Uh, most of the times I will reply or I will communicate uh, uh, in the afternoon or in the night or tomorrow, depending on how congested my, my day has been. Thank you so very much. Now that you are ready with your tithe, you are ready with your tithe, with your offering, let us make our declarations. Let us make our declarations. Make sure you write on your envelope. If it is your tithe, write tithe. If it is your thanksgiving, if it is your altar offering, you just write on the on the on the on the on the envelopes. Now let us let us lift up our our tithes, our envelopes, or our phones that which your purpose to give, and let us make our confession as we destroy the works of the enemy. By my tithe, I declare that Jesus is alive in my resources. By my tithe, I declare the windows of heaven open for me. By my tithe, I declare the devourer bound out of my resources. The provision of God and the abundance of God are my portion. The wisdom of God leads me all the way. And the favor of God opens doors for me. Therefore, I shall not lack any good thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so very much. May the Lord richly bless you. What we will do, we will rise up from the back without crowding. We will come and place it uh, 
bring in your tithe or your offering, everything will go in the same basket, in, in this basket. So you just put your offering and your tithe, everything there, provided you have marked, and it will go where it is supposed to be. Thank you so very much, Ashas. Don't wait for someone to be number one. You be the first one. You be the number one. And, and let us keep the protocol so that we, can, we, we don't have any traffic jam. You don't go back the same way you came. You go back a different way uh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you so very much. As you, as you come, uh, let me also say that uh, we have a baby girl. Baby girl born to Elvis and Elizabeth. Elvis and Elizabeth have gotten a baby girl. And we celebrate with them in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we celebrate the birth of a baby girl, one of our members, a member of the choir, James Kamau, our brother James Kamau has lost his elder brother. Our, our, our brother James Kamau lost his elder brother and will be buried at Nakuru, in a, at the Nakuru Cemetery. What, what date? 29th, on the 29th of October. This, this coming Thursday, I, I, I will give you, I will ask the media to put the number on the, on the screen. You put the number of this, on the, I'll put the, put the number on the screen so that uh, they can, uh, the, the people uh, can be able to copy it. This is James Kamau, our brother James Kamau, 0753, 0753, Thank you so, so very much. Remember, every day, Monday through Saturday, Monday through Saturday, we bring you the ever-living word of God on social media and one accord television. Social media and one accord television, we bring you the word of God uh, on a daily basis. This is a life commitment. I've told Joyce, this is a life commitment and we will go on. With corona or no corona, we will still go on. And every Thursday, every Thursday evening, Thursday night at uh, 5, not 5, at 8.15. 8.15 is our communion service. It takes just about 40 minutes. Uh, so please prepare, get ready, and participate in the communion. And as the doors keep opening, you can invite a neighbor and teach them on the communion. Let them listen to the word and then partake of the communion. Please put back that number, J uh, James Kamau's number. James Kamau is on 7753 uh, Please send him a text message, send him an M-Pesa, let him know that we are together, we are standing with him and praying for him and with him in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. now, on our this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday is going to be the first. Somebody say, Majestic City, Majestic City. Watch out, we are coming. We have been pregnant for many years. We have been expectant for many years. Our due date has been announced by the doctor. First of November. First of November. Baby Majestic City is being born. So please invite your friends, invite your cousins, invite your relatives. Let's gather in there. The place is huge. The place is huge. You, you, you can, you can, we will make arrangements so that if you, if you want to sit in your car, you can sit in your car and follow the service in the car. Or you can sit outside, you can sit under the, under the construction, you can sit under, the bananas are not big, big yet. But you can, you can sit in the sun, let's pray that it's not, it's not going to be too, too hot on that day. There will be a cloud covering the place so that we can have a service. And, uh, uh, we, 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 we trust that we are going to have a great service as the baby is born. One of the, one of the ideas that, that has come is that we have something called a free market. We have a free market. Not that things are free, but you buy freely. So the things will not be free. Whatever you want to, there are those of you who would be interested in selling something, whatever you, you, you have. Maybe you have an, a suit you'd like to sell. You just, you, just, you just report, you get a table, you can hang your suit there. Or you have some, some shoes you'd like to sell. You hang them there. See, it's our compound. There are things I wanted to do here, I cannot do here. Now there, nobody will stop me from doing them. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Or you have some tomatoes. Some tomatoes you want to sell, you can, you can, you can bring your tomatoes and you sell them there. Or you have some, uh, some yogurt. You see, I'm learning. It's no longer yogurt, it's yogurt. You, you have some yogurt. You, that, huh? And long life, long life. You know, UHT. There is Wimsey UHT. UHT milk. And uh, it, it, I, have, I have drunk it. It's, it's very good. It is prayerful. I went there to dedicate the place. So you can be sure that is good milk. So if you, if you, if you want to have, a, to have a table, if you want to have a table, you talk to Joyce. Talk to Joyce or talk to Pastor Margaret, and then you can, we can organize for that, for that table. There will be a space, some space uh, that will be set aside for those, for those tables. But you come with your own table and your own umbrella. So that so that that is uh, that is that is uh, that is done. Okay. Is, hmm? Yes, and we also agreed. We also agreed that you would come with your salt. You would come with your salt because uh, there are people who have been coming with their salt individually and placing it at the altar. That that day we we, de we decided it's going to be a salt Sunday. So you come with your salt. We will pray. We will dedicate it to the Lord, and you will take it with you home as a weapon. You will take your weapon, your salt back home as a weapon. And the desire the desires of your heart shall be shall be manifested. They shall be met in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no way I can hold this salt and remain the same. So whoever brought this salt, may you, the, the desires of your heart be granted in the name of Jesus Christ and to the glory of God. So that we will have one service here. We'll have one service here, th this, this, this first service. Once we are done here, we will all go to the Majestic City to start the Majestic City service. You don't want me to go and start alone. If I started the, at the old town hall alone, I can't come here and start alone. If we didn't start at the, at the, at the Aga Khan, I didn't start alone. We started with 35. So there, we are not going to start with 35. We'll have all of you there in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. After that, we'll be having a, a first service here, then run there, and the second service will continue here while the service is continuing on the other end because we are redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yes. Yes, because we know there are some of us who may not have transport, transportation to, to the majestic city. Number one, if you don't have transport, you look for somebody with a car and see if you can make arrangements, do, do the bookings now. You, if you do the bookings, okay. Now, if you have not gotten someone who, who can give you a lift, you may do a registration, uh, put your name, give your name to the ushers so that we know how many buses we are going to bring to ferry people to the majestic city. Are, are, we, are we together on that? So that everything is done decently and in order. Is there anything else that I've for, forgotten? These papers, these papers, ashes, are you going to collect them? Let us, let us do it this way. Instead of the ashes collecting them, you get your paper, leave it on the chair. Now you get your paper and leave it on the chair where you are sitting. Ashes, you are going to collect them after we are done. Because this is, this is the longest I have done post-corona. It is, it is but uh, we are still within the two, the two hours. But we want to maintain the uh, one and a half hours, the 90, the 90 minutes. Okay. I was going to ask anybody with a question, then I remembered this is Sunday morning. <laughs> I, I remember this is this is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning. Okay, are you ready for the benediction? Are you ready for the benediction? You are commanded to walk in the word you have received. You shall walk in agreement. You shall recover all. You shall recover all. You shall recover all. The Amalekites have been destroyed. The Amalekites have been destroyed. This will be your best week ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a super, super, super week. If you need to talk to our pastors, they are right here. Thank you so very much. May the Lord richly bless you.
Sabah. 